In this online lecture, we're going to learn about carboxylic acids. Uh, the carboxylic acids are, are a very important functional group, and we're only going to learn a tiny bit about them this semester. It's usually reserved for the second semester, but for those of you who are taking biochemistry and you're only taking the first organic chemistry, you really need to become familiar with carboxylic acids. Uh, carboxylic acids are important because they are a functional group that leads to both esters and amides, which are both biologically very important, and they are abundant in nature. Not only do you find them as a product of oxidation of various compounds, for instance, acetic acid comes from uh, the oxidation of sugars, butanoic acid is formed in rancid butters, and you uh, find that fats can be hydrolyzed along chain aliphatic acids that we call fatty acids. Another place that you'll see carboxylic acids is in amino acids, which form proteins. So you can see these are very common in biology and in biochemistry. To name carboxylic acids, we add the, the ending anoic acid to the prefix. So you count the number of carbons and then add anoic acid on the end. So if I look at this first acid on the left, we can see there are three carbons, which is probe, and then I add anoic acid to it, and you, uh, you have that represents this compound. If I go to the next, I will see that there are five carbons, so it's pentanoic acid, but there is a substituent. The functional group sets a numbering system, so this will be 4-methyl pentanoic acid. If I go down to the, uh, to farther to the right, you'll see this is a dioic acid. So what do we call it? Count the carbons, and you will find there are eight. So we're going to call this an octane dioic acid. We don't have to number the functional group because it's always going to be on a number one or the tail end of the compound in uh, the case of a dioic acid. So now what we do is we're going to number and place, number and identify the, function, uh, the substituents. So we have a methyl and an ethyl. It's either three or six or six or three. How do we assign the numbers we, when they're equal? Remember, we give the, uh, the lowest in alphabetical order the lower number. So it's 3-ethyl, 6-methyl, octane, dioic acid. Here are some examples of nomenclature. Remember that the acid functional group has priority over aldehydes, ketones, ethers, alkenes, and alcohol groups. And the number one carbon is always the acid functional group. So if I look at this compound right here, I can uh, see that the longest chain, the principal chain, one, two, three, four, five. There's five in the longest chain. So it's going to be a pentanoic acid. What is attached to that pentanoic acid? The substituents are going to be one, two, three, methoxy, and 4-methyl. So 3-methoxy, 4-methyl, pentanoic acid. If I look at this, the, the base acid is going to be benzoic acid. And then the, on the number 3 carbon, it is an ethyl. So 3-ethyl, benzoic acid. Here's some for you to try. First one is draw chloroacetic acid. We also call it chloroethanoic acid. Well, the first thing I would do is draw the ethanoic or acetic acid, which is a two-carbon acid. And then the chlorine must be on a carbon that's not in the functional group. So it has to be on the carbon alpha to the acetic acid. So this is chloroacetic acid. Name this compound. Well, this is a three-carbon compound, so it's going to be propanoic acid. And then notice what you have right here. You have a hydroxyl group on the alpha carbon or the number two carbon. So what do we call this? We call this 2-hydroxypropanoic acid. 
The common name for this is rather interesting and you will recognize it. The common name for this is lactic acid. It's what is called an alpha hydroxy acid, which you may have recognized that name also since it's used in cosmetics for uh, smoothing of the skin. There are carboxylic acids that we call fatty acids. The fatty acids have a long carbon chain. They can either be saturated with no double bonds or unsaturated. Right here, we're showing you a saturated fatty acid. There are no double bonds in it, and it's called stearic acid with 18 carbons in it. Uh, this is one that you find in mammals. Uh, the fatty acids are very common in nature. Those that have double bonds tend to come primarily from plants, and the ones that are saturated t tend to come from uh, mammals. Uh, something to note about fatty acids, this part of the fatty acid, the functional group part, can hydrogen bond to water, and so is hydrophilic. The long carbon chain is all nonpolar, and so it is hydrophobic. The carboxylic acids uh, have a carbon in the carbonyl that is sp2 hybridized. So that means that the carbon oxygen double bond along with the carbon that is attached to the carbonyl and the oxygen that is attached to the carbonyl are planar and they have 120 degree bond angles. Because there are two oxygens in the uh, carbon carboxylic acid functional group, they can hydrogen bond to water. And so you have some water solubility from the carboxylic acid functional group, but they also can hydrogen bond to each other because there is a hydrogen attached to the oxygen in uh, the, the car, uh, carboxylic acid functional group. Not only can they hydrogen bond to each other, but they actually can do a very interesting dimer where they hydrogen bond to each other by the uh, hydrogen in the carboxylic acid functional group, hydrogen bonding to a carbonyl in another one, and the, that other one having its hydrogen, hydrogen bond to the carbonyl, it makes this kind of neat little um, dimer. Strong hydrogen bonding causes a much higher boiling point Carboxylic than acids the are acids, so they are proton donors. If you dissolve a carboxylic acid in water, if it's soluble enough, it will produce a small concentration of protons. It is a weak acid. Carboxylic acids are weak acids in water. But you have a hard time getting them into water when they have a significant number of carbons. Um, basically, Carboxylic acids with more than six carbons are considered to be water insoluble. However, if you want them to go into water, what can you do? You can react them with a base, and carboxylic acids are a strong enough acid to form a salt with either sodium hydroxide or even sodium bicarbonate. Once they form the salt, they're very water soluble, and this is a technique that we use for causing. Uh, pharmaceuticals to be soluble in the bloodstream is we form them into salts and they're more readily absorbed into the bloodstream. Uh, an example would be something like naproxen sodium. Naproxen is a carboxylic acid, but it becomes more water soluble if we form it into the salt, which is naproxen sodium. Uh, the pKa of acids indicates their strength and you remember that the lower the pKa the more acidic a compound is uh, and carboxylic acids are a weak acid they tend to have a pKa of about five if you substitute them with electron withdrawing groups they can lower the pH I mean pKa below that and if you give them electron donating groups, their pKa will rise. So now, what is the IUPAC name for this carboxylic acid? 
Well, to answer this, you have to look at what is the longest chain. The longest chain is really the cyclohexene, and you have the carboxylic acid uh, is attached to it. So we name it just like that. We're going to call it a cyclohexene carboxylic acid. Um, you cannot have a cyclohexenoic acid. Uh, there is no, cyclo no cyclohexenoic acid. That's not possible. When the carboxylic acid is attached to a ring, then we call it a carboxylic acid uh, attached to that ring. So if I look at this, cyclohexene carboxylic acid is the name of this, and then where are we going to number that carboxylic acid? Well, it has to be the number one carbon, so we call it one cyclohexene carboxylic acid. Go ahead and name this compound. Well, if I want to go name this, I, it's going to be named as a benzoic acid, so I can discard all the other things that are attached there. Uh, and if I look, I can see that on the number three carbon, there's a bromo, and on the number four carbon, there's a methyl. So it's between these two. How do I decide which? Well, I always give the lower alphabetical order the first position in uh, naming. So the correct name is 3-bromo-4-methyl-benzoic acid. Go ahead and name this compound. Well, to name this compound, I have to find the primary chain, which is the longest chain with the functional group. If I count this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or I count this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I would see that hexanoic acid is a longer chain. Now to name it, I'm going to number it from the functional group. This is number one, so that's number two. This is going to be two propyl hexanoic acid. This is oleic acid. What would be the IUPAC name for this? Okay, so if I look at this, first of all, I notice that it is cis, and another name for cis is Z. So I see that all of these have the correct uh, way of labeling this. Either would be fine. Now let's look and see what is going to be the length of the chain. If I count the carbons, I'm going to find there are 18. So that would be octadec, and you can see all of them are octadec. But it is going to be an ene oic acid. We don't ever number the oic acid, so it's going to be, uh, ju it's just going to be, uh, not this one where it says one oic acid, we're not going to do that. So it's going to be an ene oic acid, but we have to label where the ene is, so number one's out. Uh, how, how is it we're going to label it? We're going to have to go and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's going to be a nine ene. So it can be a 9-enoic acid, or it could be 9-octadecalenoic uh, acid. The correct way of doing this would be octadec 9 enoic acid. You could also write cis-octadec 9 enoic acid. The, what's wrong with the first one is not the cis, but that the ene is not numbered. What's wrong with number five is we don't put that ill in. We would call it z 9 octadecene oic acid without the ill in there. Go ahead and name this compound now. Okay, to name this compound, we find the longest chain, and going down either path gives us the same number, which is going to be five. So this is going to be a pentenoic acid, and there's a propyl on the, the number two carbon. So the name of this is 2-propyl pentenoic acid. To name this compound, it's going to be a dioic acid. Uh, but if you look, you can see that it has a carboxylate group, 
or carboxylic acid group attached to the cyclohexane ring. So what we're going to have to do is name this as cyclopentane and we're going to have to locate those two functional groups so it's going to be a 1,3 cyclopentane dicarboxylic acid. Oh, and I had left off the cis. Notice they are on the same side, and that would be the proper way to name that. Go ahead and name this glutaric acid as a common name. Name it using IUPAC method. Well, to name this compound, the first thing we have to do is count the carbons, and we see there are five. So it's going to be a pentane, and it's a dioic acid, so we're just going to say pentane dioic acid. There's no need to say 1,5 because the acids must be on the end. So pentane dioic acid is sufficient. Name this compound. Well to name this compound I will see that there are seven in the ring and so I'm going to be calling it heptatriene, cycloheptatriene. And then there's a carboxylic acid attached on the outside. So it's going to be a cycloheptatriene carboxylic acid. Now, if I go to uh, name this, I have to name where the enes are. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the methyls are on the five and the five. It's not necessary to say one carboxylic acid. Why? Because the carboxylic acid is in the number one position. Name this compound using IUPAC nomenclature. First thing I'm going to do is count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to call this pentane, pentane or pentanoic acid now. And where are the substituents? 1, 2, 3 hydroxyl for 5 hydroxyl. So it's 3, 5 dihydroxyl and 3 methyl pentanoic acid. And then we have to specify the chirality of this. If I look, highest priority, next highest priority, next. So this is R since the methyl is lowest of all and back. This is R, so it's going to be R-3,5-hydroxyl-3-methyl pentanoic Name this compound acid. using IUPAC nomenclature. Well, the longest chain here is 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons. So this is going to be a butenoic acid. On the number 2 carbon, we have a methyl group, so it's 2-methyl-butenoic acid. And of course, we have to specify whether it's E or Z. And you can see that it is E, that the priority groups are opposite each other. So it's E, 2-methyl, 2-butenoic acid. Name this compound. To name this compound, we count the longest chain, which is hex. And so this is a hexenoic acid. And we see there's a ketone on the number 5 carbon, so it's 5-oxo. Hexanoic, hexanoic acid. List these in order of acidity. The most, uh, the most acidic compound will be the one with the most uh, electron withdrawing group. That's going to be the nitro benzoic acid. Next would be the chloro benzoic acid. Finally, Having no substituent is more acidic than having an electron donating group on it of the methyl. List these in order of acidity. Well, if I look at this again, the electron withdrawing group will make the benzoic acid most acidic, then no group, and then the methyl is electron donating. Last of all is acetic acid. It is slightly less acetic than a benzoic acid. List these in order of acidity. Well, we, you can see that we have uh, 
three carboxylic acids, which of course are going to be more acidic than an alcohol, what's the difference is an electron withdrawing group. The bromo here is very close to the benzo uh, to the carboxylic acid, and here it's farther away. But bromo is electron withdrawing. So if I look, I'm going to choose the electron withdrawing group as being most acidic and the one that's closest to the carboxylic acid functional group as being the most acidic. So that is number one. Number two is going to be where it's a little bit farther away. Three, where there's no electron withdrawing group. And then, of course, the alcohol is the least acidic of all. What is the product of the reduction of a carboxylic acid with this strong reducing agent? Of course, it's going to make the alcohol. What is the product of uh, chromic acid with this primary alcohol? Of course, it's going to give you the carboxylic acid, and it does not change the alkene functional group. So what is the product of treating a carboxylic acid with a Grignard reagent? Remember that a Grignard reagent is very basic. So if I treat an acid with a carbo uh, carboxylic acid with a Grignard reagent, all you're going to get is proton transfer. So the product of this reaction is a carboxylic acid salt and methane. Remember that we saw the same reaction with alcohols. Anything that is protic when mixed with a Grignard reagent is just going to have proton transfer. What reagent is needed to change this aldehyde to a carboxylic acid? Well, if you remember, if we have a primary alcohol, it oxidizes it all the way down to a carboxylic acid. But the intermediate that you can't stop oxidation at is an aldehyde. So if we take an aldehyde and mix it with chromic acid, what do we get? We end up getting the carboxylic acid.